your Ford's battery may be ready for failure. And if you listen closely, it'll give you three signs it may be ready to do so. If you change the battery before those three signs, you're going to avoid that dreaded situation where you come out to your vehicle, turn the key, and nothing. You're late for work or you're late for that important appointment. So I'm going to go through those three warning signs, change this battery, and also explain what this is and test one of the internet's most popular methods of resetting this without a scan tool. And I'm going to try that method and then try looking at the information with my snap-on scan tool to make sure that method did its job properly. Let's go. That first warning sign may be your auto start-stop system. That little logo there, not working as often as it used to be. Now a quick way to check the function of that is going through your instrument cluster. Use your buttons on the left side of your steering wheel. You want to press the left button, goes to your menu, go to your trip fuel, press OK, and you can see your trips, fuel economy, and one of them is the auto start stop. It says engine on, operation normal. Now after you drive it for a little while, when the system's ready, that light will go out, and when it sees a, a situation where it would like to shut off the engine, this will happen. It'll say engine on due to vehicle charging. That's basically the vehicle picking up that the battery voltage is low and not letting the auto start stop kick on to keep the alternator turning and charging the battery. Second warning sign is something we've all done it. Get home from a long drive, coming home from work, get in the driveway, shut your engine off. You lean back and you just go to listen to the radio for a few minutes. Maybe your favorite song's on. And before... That used to stay on for quite a few minutes. And now, after even a minute or two, it'll shut off to save battery. That's basically a sign saying the battery capacity just isn't enough, and it's shutting off to make sure your engine is able to start the next time you go to turn that key. Third warning sign is just father time. This truck is a 2020. And we're at 117, 133,000 miles on it. And it's still running the original battery. The average life expectancy of a battery in most vehicles is if you get three to five years, you're doing pretty good. And this is a 2020. We're a quarter of the way through 2025. So the odds are one of these days they're going to come out to this vehicle, turn the key, and it's not going to start. Now the sensor, like many vehicles nowadays, Ford has a battery monitoring system. It monitors the temperature of the battery, current going in, current going out, and it'll adjust voltage output from your alternator to suit the, the needs of the vehicle as well as the battery. And let's face it, as the battery ages, the charging system has to change accordingly to keep the battery charged. Now the older ones didn't have a sensor like this. They had one that clamped around the negative battery terminal and you'd see the sensor coming off of that. But the function of that is very similar to these ones. Now I got my snap-on scan tool hooked up and I'm going to show you what kind of information a battery monitoring system will give you. So if you scroll down, you want to look for your body control module. Yes, go to data display, scroll down to battery ignition data. If you go down to the very bottom, there we go. Vehicle battery days in service, 1,786. As well as the battery estimated temperature is 59 degrees Fahrenheit. State of charge, 53%. And that's a problem they've been having. That battery just won't get up to, up to charge, won't get any past 53%, and it's starting to have problems with the auto start stop and the entertainment system staying on. Charging systems, putting out fine, just uh, the batteries just end of life basically. So we're gonna change the battery. We're gonna try the reset that I see on the internet that you don't need a scan tool for. And the way we're gonna verify if that works or not is we're gonna look at the state of charge as well as the days in service. If those go up to about 
judging on uh, the voltage of the battery, it's been sitting on a shelf and maybe a little bit lower. But the days of service should go to zero if that reset procedure works. So let's change the battery and check it out. Go to your parts store of choice and order a new battery for your vehicle. Make sure you get the proper size and the proper spec of battery. As you can see here, this is a 760 cold cranking amp battery. And when you get the new battery, you want to take a look at the sticker on it. This one, as you can see, 760 cold cranking amps. And you should see a sticker on it that says the manufacturing date, February of 2025. We're only into May, so you know that battery hasn't been sitting on the shelf for a few years. Changing the battery is very straightforward on his F-150s. As you can see, everything's right in the open. All you need is an 8 millimeter socket for the hold down and 10 millimeter sockets for your battery terminal clamps. As well, it's always a good idea to get one of these battery terminal cleaners, cleaning terminals even on a new battery, as well as the clamps on your vehicle. Now, which terminal should you take off first, you ask? Good rule of thumb is negative battery terminal is always the first one off and the last one on. So with these, quite simple, take 10 millimeter, righty tighty lefty loosey, run that clamp out, wheel your connector, and pull it off, tuck it out of the way, and repeat the process on your positive terminal. Wiggle that one free, tuck it out of the way, and now you move to your battery hold down, which is 8 millimeter. Same thing, ready, tidy, lefty, loosey. Run, pull it and your battery hold down out of the way, and you're ready to pull your battery out. Some batteries you lock out, and they come with these handy lifting handles. So just grab the two handles, lift it up and out, put it down next to your new battery, and just make sure it is the same size. Positive terminals are in the same spot, negative terminals are in the same spot. Because after all, they may have grabbed the wrong battery or looked up the wrong spec. So once you're positive that they're the right ones, if you have a battery blanket like this one, take that off, put on your new one, lift it up and put it in the truck. Once you get your battery in place, you can take the protective caps off and just give your new terminals just a quick brush with the terminal cleaner which on the inside you have the wire brushes which work good for these and if you open it up you'll see the brushes which are good for cleaning your battery terminals give them both a thorough cleaning as well as check all your connections. Make sure they're clean as well. So we do the negative as well as the positive. These ones are actually in pretty good shape. I'll leave an Amazon affiliate link in the description of this video for this battery terminal cleaner. I've been using this style for years and it always gets the job done and it's quite reasonably priced. Let's grab your Hold down and bolt, put it down in place, start it, and then tighten it down. You don't have to do too crazy, just as long as you wiggle the battery and it's nice and secure. Just like so. And now you can go ahead, like I said earlier, pause the terminal on, tighten it up. You don't have to go too crazy. Last thing you want to do is break the bolt. So just snug it just enough so that when you grab your terminals, nice and secure, doesn't move. Some vehicles, you may want to have your keys ready because sometimes when you hook up the battery after having disconnected, your alarm might go off. Let's put your negative on, put it down all the way, and tighten up your battery hold down. 
Just nice and snug, just like the positive. Again, make sure it's nice and secure. And your battery is hooked up. Now, let me tell you about this reset procedure for your battery monitoring system. And we're gonna check it out and see if it works using my scan tool. So we got our new battery in. And you can see, days in service is still 1,786. And the battery temperature is 62. And the state of charge is 58. The same information as the old battery. So let's uh, reset the system and see what comes back. So I'll disconnect the scan tool. And shut off our ignition. So it says to do the manual reset, what you wanna do is turn your key on, or if you have push button start, just turn your accessories on, but have the engine off, not running. Let everything boot up. Yeah, our hood is ajar because we still have it open. Now what it says is you want to flash the high beams five times. So one, two, three, four, five, and press the brake pedal down all the way and all the way up three times. One, two, three. So now it says our battery light is supposed to start flashing. You can see the light is now flashing. It took me a couple times, but uh, yeah, give it a, well, two or three tries. And then uh, now let's hook up our scan tool and see if it did the job. So let's go to our data display again. What do you think? Is it going to work? I hope so. It'd be nice to have a little bit of verification to make sure something like that works for you guys. Because not everybody has access to a bi-directional scan tool. Oh, that doesn't work there. Vehicle battery days in service, zero. Vehicle battery estimated temperature, 66 degrees. And vehicle battery, state of charge, 90%, which is normal. That battery's been sitting on the shelf since February. It may need a little bit of a charge. Well, it's nice to see that manual reset that uh, basically everybody can do without a scan tool does work. And now, with a new fresh battery in here, it's auto start stop should be working as it's designed, saving us a little bit of a little bit of fuel and a little bit of money, as well as our entertainment system should run for a decent amount of time after your ignition is off. As well as at least now we know we got a brand new battery in there, and we shouldn't have to worry about coming out to the vehicle and not having it start in the morning or when you're late for your appointment. So it's nice to see that that manual reset does actually work for you guys. And uh, when you change your own battery, you don't have to take it to a shop to get the battery monitoring system reset. You can do it yourself. Just flash the high beams five times, press the brake pedal three times, and see that battery light flash. You may have to try it two or three times before it works, but as we learned here, it does work. If you found this video helpful, informative, and entertaining, and I hope it helps someone save a few bucks by being able to change your own battery yourself, as well as uh, learning what the what the warning signs are when your battery is getting ready to go. As well as that, uh, you can do a manual reset on your battery monitoring system, and you don't have to take it to a shop. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. If you want to see more like it, hit the subscribe button and notification bell in the bottom right-hand corner. That way you get notified when we get new videos coming out. Well, that's it for tonight, everybody. Have a good night, and thanks for watching.